Hello ladies and gentlemen, ScareTubo4 here bringing you another Minecraft 4 2 vehicle tutorial. In this store we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the 3 inch gun mortar carriage M10, also known simply as the M10 Wolverine. The M10 Wolverine was an American tank destroyer of World War II. After the US entry into World War II and the formation of the tank destroyer force, a suitable vehicle was needed to equip the new battalions. By November 1941, the Army requested a vehicle with a gun and a fully rotating turret after other interim models were criticized for being too poorly designed. The prototype of the M10 was conceived in early 1942, being delivered in April of that year. After appropriate changes to the hull and turret were made, the modified version was selected for production in June 1942. 42 as the 3 inch gun motor carriage M10. It mounted a 3 inch 76.2 millimeter gun M7 in a rotating turret on a modified M4A2 Sherman tank chassis. Alternative model, the M10A1, which used the chassis of an M4A3 Sherman tank, was also pr uh, produced. Production of the two models ran from September 1942 to December 1943 and October 1942 to November 1943, respectively. Uh, the M10 Wolverine is a very, very iconic uh, tank destroyer of World War II for the American forces. Um, it was used by uh, other forces as well, such as the British, and I'm sure uh, the Soviets got a hold of a few of these and used these as well. Um, overall, the vehicle itself is really cool and really iconic and um, just a really awesome tank destroyer. Um, I do believe this is a redesign. I remember having a tutorial out for the old design for the M10 Wolverine, uh, or the old uh, one I should say, and this is kind of a redesigned version of that, which, you know, basically, obviously improves it, and <laughs> basically as simple as that. Um, so, uh, really happy to uh, release a nice new tutorial for it, as I uh, felt some things in the Wolverine could have used some upgrading, especially with the new chassis I'm using on my M4 Shermans, uh, this was a perfect time to go ahead and update it. So, um, anyways, going ahead and taking a look at it, let's go and dive into the um, vehicle. So, starting off, we have obviously the standard kind of front here of most Shermans. Uh, what's different about this is that it does not have the hull mounted machine gun, nor does it have really a visible driver's viewport uh, similar to that of the Sherman. Um, it just kind of relies on this little, um, you know, uh, basically view, uh, little. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of you, but like optics uh, on top of it, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, same chassis as a standard Sherman. Um, nothing real crazy, anything real unique about it. Um, the hull is where it starts to get a little bit different. The M10 Wolverine had um, a very interestingly designed kind of wider um, hull, which stuck out on both sides a little bit further than the actual vehicle itself, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, don't know exactly design choice why may, why that was the case maybe to give more room in the for the turret or some other modifications who knows maybe to give it a little bit more armor but uh, then again the m10 wolverine's armor sucked basically period um then on the back here nothing too fancy we got the support here for the gun barrel uh the back lights the uh, some extra tools mounted on the sides there for a bit of detail and the main kind of key component here is obviously the turret so inside the turret we do have a bit of interior here with the gun breech, um, the stabilizers for the gun, and uh, obviously some chairs here, which don't work the greatest, but chairs here for obviously the loader and um, gunner as well. And then on the back here, we have some ammunition kind of stored up here in these, the sandstone type look, some ammunition uh, ready to go kind of on the hot rack, and then of course a 50 cal mounts on the back here for anti-aircraft, also probably anti-infantry purposes as well. Um, overall, really nice uh, design overall for the M10 Wolverine. Um, I do think this is a great improvement over the last one, and um, you know, happy to uh, release another uh, Wolverine tutorial out there that's uh, you know improving upon a old build. Anyways, uh, let's go and dive into the tutorial by beginning with our first set of layers, layers zero through one. Alrighty, guys. So going ahead and moving into our first uh, set of layers here, we have layers zero through one. For these layers, we're going to go ahead and start off by getting our track kind of established. So for this, we're going to start off by placing down a narrow brick slab, followed by a narrow brick top slab coming off that slab. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak with a stair that goes back like this with a item frame on the side of the stair and a green stink wheel block in the item frame. After that's done, uh, in the space behind the stair, we're going to place down a another brick block kind of down in the ground, followed by a string, that kind of piece of string that goes across the top of that narrow brick block. 
Once that's done, uh, going back from the stream, we're going to place down a row of 1 and 2. Dark Oak with stairs going back. We're going to take some item frames, place down 2 item frames on the sides here, and 2 green snake boot blocks in those item frames. Continuing on, we're going to place down 1 and 2. Dark Oak with stairs come off those 2 Dark Oak with stairs there. Again, 2 item frames and 2 green snake boot blocks. Once that's done, we're going to place down another uh, narrow brick block, kind of in the ground like so, and it's another string on top of the narrow brick block. Continue now, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair if it's back facing toward the string, an item frame, and a green stink wood block in the item frame, followed by another brick slab and a narrow brick top slab like that to round that off and finish our right side here of the tracks. Once that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go up to the front here. We want to go ahead and go to this dark oak wood stair right here, this first one. We're going to place down one, two, and three dark oak wood top slabs across to the side. To come off the front here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood top slab kind of on both sides here, leaving a space in the middle. Uh, we're then going to go, ahead and go to the back. We're going to go ahead and go to the snare brick slab right here. We're going to place down a row of three of dark oak with top slabs across like that. And basically, we want to fill in the space in between these slabs uh, like this, like so, with more dark oak with top slabs to create a nice base for the hull of the tank. After that's done, we're going to place down a dark oak with fence gate coming off this dark oak with uh, top slab, followed by two open dark oak with fence gates on both sides of this fence post. Once that's done, it's just up to us to copy the track design. From the other side over to this side so we're just going to go ahead and replicate that um, real simply and uh, like so I'm not gonna I'm gonna go kind of fast here I'm not gonna explain it uh, block by block as I already did on the other side there so just kind of refer back to the other side if you need to or if uh, you've already got the hang of it you can just go ahead and you know go at the piece I'm going here uh, make sure you place your blocks here in the ground and of course don't forget the string on top of those blocks Anyways, once that's complete, that's going to do it for the chassis for the M10. Let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer 2. Alrighty guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer 2. For layer 2, we're going to start off by going to the front up here. We're going to place down a dark oak wood, or sorry, about a nether brick stair on top of these two uh, nether brick top slabs. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a green stink wood block going back from these two uh, nether brick stairs. On the sides of these uh, green stink wood blocks, we're going to place down a stone button, item frame, and a cobweb like that. Um, in that order. So same thing over here, stone button, item frame, and cobweb like that for the wheels up here in the front. Um, once that's all done there, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood stair. We're going to place down a dark oak wood stair facing each other on top of these two dark oak wood top slabs. And in between these stairs over this empty space, we're going to place down another dark oak wood stair, this time facing forward. So we have two corner stairs on both sides here. Uh, we then want to grab ourselves a zombie head and place down a zombie head coming off this um, narrow brick stair gonna be like that on both sides once that's done go ahead and continue on toward the back here we want to go and take our green stink with blocks place down a row of three across followed by another brick top slab on both sides continuing on again another row of three of green stink clay across followed by this time a anvil and we're also going to need to grab some signs here we're going to place down an anvil which should be on top of the string right here which will cause it to float and we also want to place down a sign on the side of these anvils as well once that's done, continue on, we're going to place down another row of three of green stained clay across the middle here, followed by another brick top slab again on both sides. We're going to go ahead and then place down two rows of three of green stained clay across the middle here, followed by again one and two anvils on the sides here, same thing over here, one and two anvils. And on the sides of these anvils, we want to go ahead and grab some signs and place down signs like this, and same thing over here, like that. Once that's done, we're going to take our green hardened stained clay, place down a row of three across, followed by a nether brick top slab on both sides of that row of three of green stained clay. Uh, we're then going to place down a second row, or sorry, another row of three of green stained clay, this time again an anvil on both sides, which should be on top of the string, and of course floating like we did up in the front there. We're then going to place down another row of three of green stained clay across, a nether brick top slab on both sides. Uh, we then want to place down a row of five of green stained clay all the way across, stone button on both sides, item frame and in the item frame like we did for the front we're going to want to go ahead and grab ourselves some cobwebs again so if you cut that out of your hot bar make sure you get it back some cobwebs in the item frames like that uh, once that's done we're then going to place down a nether brick stair on top of these two nether brick top slabs on the back here and in the space in between we're going to grab some acacia wood stairs and uh, we want to place down a row of three of acacia wood stairs across the back here on the left side the left uh, two stairs we're going to go ahead and place down two signs and then coming off the stair over here to the right, the acacia wood, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like that for the back exhaust muffler, um, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, once that's done, that's going to do it for layer number two. With that, let's move on to layer three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer. We're going ahead and moving on to layer three. For layer three to get started, we're going to go ahead and place down a green carpet on top of these two nether brick stairs just like that. 
Once that's done, we're going to go and place down a dark oak wood fence gate that's going to be on top of this green stankway block and kind of facing toward the back here. We then want to go ahead and take some dark oak wood stairs. We're going to place down a row of what is going to be uh, five across. We're going to place down an item frame, come off the front stairs here, and this is going to be on both sides and a glass block in the item frames, um, just like this uh, on both sides like that. Once that's done, come off the dark oak wood stairs here to both sides. We are going to then go and place down a dark oak wood corner stair. It's going to be on both sides like that. We then want to take our green stain clay. We're going to place down a row of five across, and we're going to go and repeat this um, a total of, well, uh, let's see. So we have one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we're going to go and have a total of nine rows of green stain clay, nine rows of five going all the way back and it should end on the back here on top of your exhaust and the end of the tracks here like that. Now along the sides here we're going to go and place down one and two more dark liquid stairs back from the corner stair where they're going to place down a quartz stair followed by one, two, three, four, five, and six dark liquid stairs back. Going over here to the other side we're going to go and repeat the same thing. Uh, again the quartz stair is kind of meant to represent the army star so if you uh, do not want to have that then obviously just go ahead and make it dark oak and um, get rid of it. On the back here, very simply, we're just going to place down a dark oak wood corner stair on both sides here, followed by a row of five of stairs across the back there in between. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a item frame. Uh, we're going to need a red stained glass block and also a sign. For this, we're going to, go to place down a item frame that's going to be coming off these two dark oak wood stairs, uh, some red stained glass blocks in those item frames, and a wooden sign uh, come off the front of the stair here to kind of cover that all up. So you get something that kind of looks like that for the back here. We then want to place down two item frames like this, so one on this dark oak wood stair, one on the second one. We're going to grab ourselves a shovel and also an iron axe. We're going to place down an iron shovel and an iron axe in those item frames like that uh, for the back there for the uh, tools and all that fun stuff. Anyways, once that's um, done there, we have one last thing we need to do is we're going to go back up here to the front. And if we go ahead and crouch and place down a green carpet, we should be able to place down one coming off this dark oak wood corner stair because of the button down below. Um, and same thing over here just like that for the green carpets on the side there for the continuation of the fenders. Once that's uh, done there, that is going to do it for layer three. With that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer four. All right guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to get started here, we're gonna take a zombie head and place it down on uh, this dark oak wood stair here and also this one to the side there for um, some viewports here. We then wanna place down a dark oak wood uh, slab here in the center followed by a spruce wood slab on both sides and another dark oak wood slab out to both sides. Um, and actually this dark oak wood slab here in the middle we're actually going to place with a dark oak wood stair with its back facing toward the rear. Once that's done we're going to place down a row of three of green stained clay across behind the spruce wood slabs and dark oak wood stair followed by dark oak wood slabs on, uh, dark oak wood slabs on both sides. Um, going ahead and continuing on, uh, we then want to go ahead and go behind this uh, row of three here of green stained clay. And we're going to make one quick adjustment to the inside here. Since this is an open top tank we will be doing a bit of a turret interior. So for this, we actually want to go and replace the three uh, rows here, uh, kind of on after this uh, row three of green stink leg kind of embedded in the previous layer. We are going to want to replace these with some gray carpet just to kind of create a nice base for the turret. Um, it's going to look a little bit better from above and everything like that. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, but anyways, anyways, on the sides here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair on both sides. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some dark oak wood stairs and place down a row of two upside down stairs. Well, on the sides here, same thing over here, one and two. And on the fronts of the stairs, we're going to go and place down some wooden signs. Same thing over here, like that. Uh, once that's done on the back here, uh, we want to go and place down a dark oak wood slab, come off these two stairs on both sides here. Dark oak wood stair like this going toward the middle, and a green stink wood block in the middle there, just like that. And uh, once that's done, kind of continuing on, we're going to place down a row of three of narrow brick slabs across the middle, dark oak wood slab on both sides. We're going to do the same thing again. So row of three of dark narrow brick slabs in the middle, dark oak wood slab on both sides, and a narrow row of three of dark oak wood slabs across the back here. Um, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a wooden trap door, place it down in the middle, dark oak wood stair, and then on both sides of the wooden trap door, we're going to go ahead and place down a um, wooden trap door facing upward like that. So you create something that kind of looks like this. Um, also in the inside here we do have a little bit of interior we're going to go ahead and start to include. So for this we're going to place down a row of three of stone brick slabs on the back here. 
And on the front section here, we do have a bit of the um, kind of gun here, so a little bit difficult to get in here and kind of see exactly what we got going on, but I think it's just simply a dark oak with it stair. And the uh, last thing we're going to do for this is we're just going to grab a wooden trap door and place down a wooden trap door to come off these two dark oak with ups downstairs for the seats here for the gunner and loader. Um, once that is all complete, that is going to do it for layer uh, number four. And with that, let's move on to layer five. So real quick before we move into layer five, I just want to go ahead and add one quick thing on the layer four. Uh, this was a uh, the start here for the radio antenna, so this is going to go on top of this uh, dark oak wood stair right here. Just a dark oak wood fence post going up like that for the start of the radio antenna. Once that's kind of complete there, we can go and kind of continue our way into layer 5. So for layer 5 to get started here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair of its back facing toward the front on top of this dark oak wood stair here. And then on top of the spruce wood slabs on both sides, we're just going to place down another dark oak wood stair like that on both sides. Now we then want to go ahead and go to the sides of these stairs, place down a sign on both sides like that. Coming off the middle uh, dark oak wood stair, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, dark oak wood slabs going out from that uh, for the barrel of the gun, followed by signs on both sides of the first slab here. And also on the bottom of the slab, we're going to place down a wooden trap door like that. Once that's all done, uh, we're going to go and take our uh, green stink clay placed down a row of three across behind these dark oak with stairs or I should say actually in, on the front of the stairs followed by a tripwire hook on both sides of that row of three. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go to the sides here. We're going to take mossy cobbles to walls, place down one and two along the side here. Same thing over here, one and two mossy cobbles to walls. We're going to follow it up by placing down a green stink clay block on both sides and on the green stink clay block on the side we're going to go and place down a stone button. So it's going to be just like this on both sides. After that is complete, we're then going to place down a dark oak with a stair on both sides. Come off those green stink clay blocks. And uh, continuing on toward the back section here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves dark oak with stairs. And we are going to be placing down a row of uh, three here of upside down dark oak with stairs across the back here. Uh, we also want to grab ourselves some dark oak wood fence gates. We're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate on, coming off both sides of these two uh, dark oak wood up downstairs like that for the back there of the turret. Now on the inside here we do have the interior so for this uh, to kind of work on it we're going to go and grab ourselves some smooth sandstone blocks and also some wooden trap doors. We're going to start off by placing down two smooth sandstone blocks on top of those two uh, dark oak wood stairs. On the side of the smooth, smooth sandstone block facing toward the front of the turret we're going to place down a wooden trap door like this on both fronts there for kind of our ammunition storage and then we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate opened up in between them uh, like that for a little bit of extra detailing. Now for the actual gun breach and all that stuff, we're going to need an anvil, a nether brick stair, a skeleton skull, and also an end rod. For this, we're going to place down an anvil on top of this dark oak wood stair. Going back from the anvil, we're going to place down a uh, dark oak wood stair, or, sorry, a nether brick stair, just like this. On the back and front of the nether brick stair, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull, and then a, coming off the wither skeleton skull, or actually the green snake wood block I should say on both sides we're going to place down a uh, end rod just like this for the kind of stabilizers here for the gun um, and once that's all complete there that is going to do it for layer five with that we'll move on to our final set of layers actually one last thing again going back to the radio antenna we're going to place down one more iron bar going up like that so once that's all complete that's going to do it for layer five with that we'll move on to our final layers which are going to be layers six seven eight and now we're going to put the top of the turret on, the machine gun, and the rest of the antenna and pretty much finish this build off. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers. Alright guys, so moving on to our next, or so I should say our last final uh, set of layers, we're going to be going ahead and working on layers 6 through 9. So for these layers to go ahead and get started, we're going to go ahead and go to the um, iron bar uh, right here, and we're going to go ahead and place down 4 more up. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 more iron bars going up. So we should have a total of 5 iron bars on top of this uh, dark oak weighted fence post there for the radio antenna. Once that's done, we're going to go, and go to the two uh, dark oak wood stairs here on both sides. We're going to place down a green carpet on top of them, followed by a row of three of green, or sorry, wooden trap doors going back like that. Coming off the wooden trap doors, we're going to place down a row of what is going to be uh, three of dark oak wood stairs, or sorry, slabs across. We then want to go ahead and go to the uh, mossy cobblestone walls here on both sides. We're going to place down a wither skull, or a zombie skull at about a 45 degree angle. After that's done, we're going to go and place down a wither, or zombie head on top of the next mossy cobblestone wall back. This one's just going to be a standard one at a 90 degree angle. And then on top of this, uh, this um, green snakewood block here, we're just going to place down a dark oak wood slab on both sides. 
Um, once that's all squared away, uh, we can go and go on top of the smooth sandstone blocks here, place down a green carpet on both sides. On the very back section here, we're going to place down a uh, dark oak wood fence post on top of this dark oak wood uh, stair here, and then a dark oak wood slab on both sides of this fence post. Now on top of the fence post for the 50 cal, we're going to go and place down a upside down narrow brick stair on top of the fence post. Going ahead and going back from the uh, the uh, uh, this uh, narrow brick stair, completely losing the uh, word for it, uh, we're going to need to go ahead and place down a string on top of this um, wooden trap door here, and then we're going to place down an anvil on top of it, so you get the back here for the gun. Uh, once that's finished there, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood fence gate that's going to come off the anvil like this, opened up toward it. And then on the side of the anvil over here to the right side of the, the anvil, we're going to go ahead and place down a sign like that. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods. We're going to place down one and two end rods coming off the front of this dark oak wood stair. And we also want to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood top slab, come off the side of the narrow brick uh, upside down stair, followed by a green carpet on top. And we also will need to go ahead and grab ourselves a redstone repeater and place down a redstone repeater on top of the narrow brick upside down stair as well. Uh, once that's all done there, uh, that is going to pretty much wrap up the uh, M10 Wolverine and it's going to end it there. So anyways, hope you guys did enjoy this new design for the M10 Wolverine, a uh, vehicle that was definitely in need of, uh, you know, some redesigning and I think the new version came out really good and uh, really represents what I wanted it to. Anyways, uh, this is going to do for this tutorial. If you guys do want to use this design, I do I so you guys give me proper credit for it. This being thank you for the side of the build. Tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. Just be sure you get proper credit for the build. That's all I ask for doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of tutorials. So, as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use whatever projects you guys are working on. And that, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett24, and I'll see you guys next time.